come there to be the Fox 8 meteorologist at Bay of Defense. He would do that, but I mean, he was very, very serious to be the statistician, and he wanted to do it absolutely perfectly. He had a wonderful system for a guy like me. They counted on a guy to give you the numbers right away and that they would be accurate. I mean, he was pretty much close to perfect, and he did it all by hand, the old-fashioned way. He had a big, big, huge whiteboard that he would bring into the broadcast booth. He'd put it up on the wall. He would fill it in completely before the game with all the names of the players that would be making plays in the game, running backs, quarterbacks, wide receivers, kickers. He had all different kinds of categories, and he would keep a running total of the numbers in the game. And, Jay, I will tell you this. If he was one yard off of a play and there was some kind of discrepancy according to the <laughs> official stats and the Goddard stats, it would drive him crazy. He would go back through his notes, I mean, you know, frantically and say, how did that happen? I think they were wrong, and most times they probably were wrong. He was just a wonderful guy. He was egoless in the booth. He was there to do a job, and he did it, and he did it very, very well, and he did it for a lot of great sportscasters like Nev Chandler, mm. Gib Shanley, Jim Mueller, Casey Coleman, and I was proud to be a part of that chain, too, that worked with him. He was a great, great guy. You know, one thing that everybody had a, a connection to Dick Goddard with was his love of animals, and I think that's one reason he was so popular. But, Jimmy, just hearing you talk about how he addressed his second job, this, I mean, his main job, obviously, was, you know, putting together weather forecasts at Channel 8. But I think the reason <laughs> yeah. so many of us could connect to him was because he had that Midwestern work ethic. Whatever his job was, yeah. he approached it as if that was the most important job in the world at that time. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. Yeah, I mean, really, that was, it, was, it was amazing to watch him. I used to drive to the stadium, and we would almost pull in at the same time. And, Jay, he would get into the parking lot, get out, and he would have that big board that I told you about <laughs> that he would fill out. He'd have a, he'd have a, just a, a whole glossary of pens and magic markers and things like that that he would bring into the booth. And he was armed and ready to go. But I do want to tell you this story. It's a great, great story and as, as we go on the back side of this. And that is his love of animals was 24-7. I'm sure we've pointed out in our coverage of Dick Goddard's life. So there was a game one time where all of a sudden the game was over, Jay. I left the broadcast booth and I had left something behind, probably my cell phone. And so the stadium had kind of cleared out and I went back up into the broadcast booth to find my cell phone. And there's I hear some noise in the booth. And by this time, everybody had departed the stadium. And there was Dick Goddard, and he was accumulating all the hot dogs that nobody ate in the, in the press box from the media lunch. And I said, Dick, what are you doing? And he said, you got to feed the pets. He said, this is the original doggy bag. <laughs> and that's how much he loved animals. And boy, did we love him. And he will be missed. Jimmy, thank you so much for the, uh, for the fond <laughs> sure. memories of... A guy that we all remember fondly and will be missed dearly. Jimmy, thanks. We'll see you at 6 o'clock.